Let's get started by creating a basic window with some widgets. That is going to look like so. In here, we have one large text box where I can write some text over multiple lines. I also have another widget, and that is a single line entry. So in here, I have one line of text. Besides that, I have a button that if I press it, it is going to print something. You can't see it right now, but it definitely works. Finally, there's one more element. This bit of text here is also what we are going to add. Although I jumped ahead a tiny bit. Before I start coding, I do want to cover a tiny bit of theory. The most important part is that widgets are the building blocks of tkinter. Which means anything you see, like a text, a button, a checkbox, any kind of menu or any kind of frame is always going to be a widget. The best way to think about it is anything you see in a graphical user interface is going to be a widget. And understanding widgets is incredibly important to understanding any GUI framework. As a matter of fact, any framework you are going to use in any language is going to work like that. You always place widgets in such an arrangement that you get some kind of interface. It doesn't really matter if you use Tkinter, React, or something like Flutter. In the most basic sense, they work in the same way, although there are lots of other differences. But they all use widgets. Inside of Tkinter, we have two sets of widgets. One is called TK widgets, and we have TTK widgets. They do sound fairly similar, and they are but TTK widgets is what you actually want to use. The original TK widgets were made in the original part of Tkinter. They do work and we are going to use some of them, but most of the time they do look quite outdated. All of them were made in the 90s and the styling really doesn't look proper anymore. TTK widgets, however, have been added much later and work in the same way, but look much better and have some extra functionality, which is why we are going to use those primarily. And that is all we need to get started. So let's jump into the code and let's have a look at all of this. Here I have a completely empty Python file. And the very first thing that I do have to do is to import tkinter. This is usually abbreviated as tk. And once we have that, I already want to execute the code just to see if we're not getting an error. And I don't, which is a good sign. That means I have tkinter installed. If you're getting an error, you probably want to check how to install tkinter. With that covered, I want to create a window. And this window we create with tk and then uppercase t and lowercase k, and this we have to call. What this is going to return is the actual window that we can place everything else in, which means I want to store this inside of another variable. Let me call it window. When you look online, you see quite a few different names for this kind of variable. A lot of people call it root, or you see app quite often. I prefer to use window, but it really doesn't matter. Choose whatever you think is best. But once we have that, we do have a window that we could show. However, if I run the code now, we can't see anything. The reason for that is that we need one more method. And let me add another label here, and let's call it run. What we have to do to actually see something is we have to get the window, the one we just created, and call main loop on it. And don't forget to call it as well. Now if I run it, we can see a basic app. You can also resize it. All of this works pretty well, although it doesn't do very much right now. And let's talk very quickly about what main loop is doing. It does a couple of things. The main loop has two major functionalities. The first one is it updates the GUI. That way, if you write some text or update any kind of widget, you actually see the result. Besides that, the main loop is also checking for events. This means without the main loop, there wouldn't be any way to check for button clicks, mouse movement, closing the window, or anything the user could potentially do. All of this combined means that our app couldn't run without the main loop, which is why we always have to call it. But other than that, it is pretty straightforward. Although there is one thing that you do want to consider. This main loop here runs until we are closing the application, which means if I write something afterwards, let's say print hello and run the code again, we can see the window, but we can't see this print hello. Only when I close the app, we get hello. 
which means the code is stopped on this line here and only when we close the window, then we get to the next line. In most instances, this isn't going to be an issue, but sometimes you do want to be aware of it. But all right, with that, we have a basic window. And there's already a couple of things that we can do. For example, we could add window.title, and this is going to be method, so we want to run it. And in here, we can add a string that changes the name of the app. In this case, I'm gonna call it window and widgets. If I run this again and expand the app a tiny bit, we can see window and widgets all the way in the top left. Another thing that you can do is set the geometry. This is another method, so window.geometry. In here, you can do a couple of things. The most basic one is set the width and the height of your app, at least when it starts. And this you do with a string again, and tkinter expects a string with the width, then an x, and then the height. Kind of a weird format, but it is what it is. For example, if you wanted to have an app that is 800 by 700 pixels, you want 800x700. Actually, let me change this to a 500 so you can see it a little bit better. Running this again now, we're getting another app that is 800 pixels wide and 500 pixels tall. The numbers we specified here and here. Later on, we are going to learn a few more methods to influence the window, but for now, I don't want to get into too much detail because it's a tiny bit more advanced. What is much more important is that we want to create widgets. That is going to be the actual lifeblood of our application. And remember what I said earlier, we have TK widgets and we have TTK widgets. And just to get started, I want to create a TK widget. One that we are going to see fairly often is called tk.text. This is a multi-line text input. Although when we are creating it, we have to give it at least one argument. We have to tell it what its master is. In our case, the master is going to be the window, the main application. So master is going to be the window. The way you want to think about it is that the master is basically the parent. When we are creating this text box, where do we want to put it? In my case, I want to put it right on the window. For now, don't worry too much about it. We are always going to place widgets on the window. But later on, when I talk about layouts, we're going to change this quite a bit. Just don't worry too much about it. This is all we need to create a basic text input box. Although if I run the code now, we can't see anything. The reason for that is that this line here only creates a widget and tells what the parent is. We don't actually place it in a visual manner. For that, we need one more method. And tkinter has quite a few different ones. The simplest one is called pack. If I run this and run the entire app, now we can see a text box. And this one can work over multiple lines. So in here, I can write as much as I want. This always works. When we get started, we are creating one widget with this line here. And this widget has a master, which is the window, which means this TK text is going to be a child of this main widget here. And what pack is doing, if I draw the entire thing, this one here is the main window, the one we created here, and we have placed the widget in the middle of the top. This is what pack is doing. It takes a widget and it places it in the middle on the top. You can customize this quite a bit, but for now, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And with that, you can create and place a basic widget. Although in practice, this is not exactly what you see. What you see much more often is that people store this widget in a separate variable and then call pack on this variable separately. Which means I want to create another variable, let me call it text. And this variable is going to contain the widget, meaning I want to get rid of this pack. And on the next line, I want to call text.pack. The result is going to be the same. Although now I do have access to this widget with the text variable, which I am not going to use for this part, but in later tutorials, this is going to be really useful. And this is what you see most of the time in tkinter when you're creating and placing widgets. And with the basic logic covered, let's talk about TTK widgets. Those are the widgets you actually want to use most of the time. And to use those, we first of all want to import them properly to use them easily. This happens 
with from tkinter import ttk. TTK is just another submodule of tkinter. So you can just import it from tkinter and that's all you need. After that, you are using TTK widgets like you would use TK widgets. For example, I want to create a label. And this label I create with ttk.label. Like we have done for the text, we have to set the master. And this, once again, is going to be the window, which essentially is going to be the parent. Besides that, for the label, we need a text argument. In my case, I want to go with this is a test. With that, we have a label, and this label I want to pack on my window. If I run the code now, we have a text widget. This one doesn't do very much, but it, well, displays some text. And this is also a very good illustration of what the pack method does. If this one here is the window, so we have a window like so, what pack is doing is it takes a widget and it packs it all the way on the top like a stack. So text was our first widget, and then we had the label widget that we placed right below. And since we called pack on the text first, number one here, this one is on top. And the label had number two, so this one is right below. Which means if I place those two around and create a label first, like so, we should have this widget all the way on the top. If I run this again, they can see we now have the text on the top. I hope it makes sense so far. I am not going to go into any further depth in terms of layouts until we get into the proper layout section. For now, all you really have to understand is that we are using pack to place widgets on the window. So that is a label. Let me actually rename the comment here, TTK label, and this I want to call TK text. There are two more widgets that I do want to cover in this section. The first one is called TTK entry. This is a single line entry widget. Let me save it under entry, and this we are creating with TTK and entry. And here, once again, as always, we have to set a master, which is going to be the window. And once we have that, I want to get entry.pack. Now if I run this again, in the bottom, we have another entry widget, and in here we can write a single line of text. If I press enter, nothing happens. But at the very least, it is working. And finally, I want to create a TTK button. Let me save it in a variable called button. And this button I create with ttk.button. In here, once again, as always, we need a master, which is going to be the window. And besides that, we need a text for the button. This I get with text, like for the label. And let me call this one a button. This button we have to place on the window with the pack method. And if I run this, we have a button that we can press. So this one is working pretty well. Although this button doesn't actually do anything right now. To make it do something, we have to add another named argument in here. And this named argument is called command. This one wants to have some kind of function. For example, this could be a button function. This button function is just a regular Python function. So all the way to the top, I want to create the button function. I don't need any arguments. And in here, I just want to print a button was pressed. And now if I run this and I press on the button, we get a button was pressed. Which means every time we are pressing this button, we are executing this function, the function we have created up here. And what is super important to understand here is that this is just a function. You do not want to call it. That would cause an error. The reason why you don't want to call it is you only want to call this function when you are pressing the button. So the button itself calls this function. So with that, we have the basic widgets. These are the widgets you are probably going to use most of the time. Now with that, what I want you guys to do is an exercise and then we can finish this part. What I want you guys to do is add one more text label and a button with a function that prints hello. The label, the one you are creating here, should say my label. Let me put this one in quotation marks like so. 
and this label should be between the entry widget and the button. Those two we have created here. The label I want to be between those two. And all of this should be fairly straightforward. So pause the video now and try to figure this one out. Let's get started with the label. That's the easier part. The label I want to, let me add the exercise label here. And I want to call this the exercise label. This is once again, just going to be ttk.label. And then here we need a master, which is going to be the window. Besides that, I want to have a text and the text should say my label, the one I specified in the exercise. With that, I have the widget and this widget, so the exercise label, I want to pack on the window. If I run this now, you can see I have my label all the way at the bottom. The issue is this my label should be between the button and the entry widget. So we have to move it. Since we know that PAX respects the order of our code, what we want to do is to move this text label between the entry and the button like so. That way we are placing the first label all the way on the top. Below there we have the text, then we have the entry, then we have the exercise label, and then we have the button. Which means the exercise label is between the entry and the button. So let's run all of this again. And there we go. My label is between the entry widget and the button. Which means all we have to do now is to create the exercise button. This I want to store in the variable I called exercise button. And this is going to be ttk.button. Inside of it, as always, I need a master, which is going to be the window. Besides that, I want to have some text. The text here doesn't really matter. Let me call this one the exercise button. And just to see that this is working, let me place the exercise, not the label, but the button on the window. And if I run this now, you can see all the way at the bottom, we have the exercise button. That is a really good start. Now we just have to create a function that makes this button print the word hello. I want to create the exercise button function. Doesn't need any arguments. And what I want to do in here is to print the word hello. Inside of the button, I have to add the command argument. And this is going to be the exercise button function. Once again, remember, you do not want to call this. You just want to pass the function in here. The button itself is going to call this function. And now if I run this and I press on the exercise button, we get the word hello. With that, we have covered the absolute basics of tkinter. Now there's one more really quick thing that I do want to cover. And that is inside of the button, the function you pass in here doesn't necessarily have to be a function by itself. It could also be a lambda function. I'm going to duplicate this line here and comment out the original. And I'm going to replace this exercise button function with a lambda function. Inside of this function, all I really want to do is to print the word hello. The result is going to be the same, meaning if I run the code now and I press on the exercise button, we get the word hello. Which means that these two lines here are identical. Although you probably want to use the second one because this one is much easier to use. Since we only want to do something fairly simple, a lambda function here would be perfectly fine. Also, if you're not sure about lambda function, this is probably something you want to look into for a tiny bit at least. For any kind of GUI, lambda functions are pretty important, especially for buttons. But well, with that, we have the absolute basics of tkinter.